Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to continue my investigation into SCSI emulator cards and in this case I'm looking at the SCSI 2 SD. It's version 5.2 card. I'm going to be trying this card out in the usual suspects in the VAC station 3100 and the Alpha Server 1000 to see how it performs and how it behaves. This card takes the full size SD cards, although I'm just running an adapter. Um, it's got the floppy connector instead of the Molex, and just the standard 50 pin connector, and a USB port that you can either power it through that or you can um, plug in a, a PC to run the application to configure it. SD cards aren't normally designed for high amounts of writing. So these cards probably won't last a long time in these adapters if they're heavily used. So I've used a high endurance card in here in the hope that it will extend the life a bit. Okay, first up is the 3100. This particular unit has uh, dual SCSI buses. Um, this is the A bus and this is the B bus, which also goes out the back. Um, in this case, I will need to have termination. So I've got termination there, and I'll need to have termination enabled in this device here. So let's plug in the PC and configure the card. This is the SCSI to SD util. So it detects the SCSI to SD on the USB bus here. These are the main settings. Um, here you enable the SCSI terminator, which I've got turned on. Speed is normal, these are fine. Um, I turn on enable parity, it doesn't really matter, but I might as well. There's various other settings here for unit attention turning on SCSI 2 which doesn't apply because it's only a SCSI 1 chip in the VAC station 3100. Uh, it's filter disk caching which didn't seem to make any difference. Um, a lot of these settings didn't seem to help at all. All these along here are the various devices that you can have. So if we go to device 1 and say enable you can set the SCSI ID set that to 1, it's a hard drive, uh, quirks mode you can set for various setups, Apple, Home TI, XFX stuff. The SCSI to SD doesn't have a file system on the SD card, it just writes straight to the raw sectors. So it wants to know the start sector and how many sectors to use. What I'm going to do for 3100 is set it to one gigabyte because that's the largest size that you can boot off. Uh, you can also change the vendor stuff here. So I'm going to pretend that it's Take disk and call it an RZ26L and the revision number. I'll just type 3100 in there so that I know that it's the 3100 disk. So the disk ID 1, it's the hard drive, starts at the beginning of the disk, it's 1 gigabyte, and that's what it is. I'll create another disk now. Uh, I'll create number two. I'll make this two gigabyte. As you can see here, it says overlapping data. So that means the sectors that are being used overlap with the other SCSI device. So if you click the auto box here, it will fill in the next blank sector available. 
counts and then what's the sector count so now they don't overlap so if I change this to deck you don't have to change these um, it works fine without them it's just a bit more readable if you put valid values in here so I'll make that a 28 and I'll call that 1000 for the alpha server 1000 so once you've got your disks set up the way you want them you can have up to seven devices defined in here but I'll only use two you go into file and then you say save to device and this will reprogram the controller with those settings the settings for the SCSI to SD are all stored on the controller they're not stored on the SD card I believe the version 6 of the SCSI to SD they do save it on the SD card but in this one they don't alright so that's all set up now we'll flip over to the console on the 3100 and have a look so let's have a look at the devices Okay, we've got DKA200, which is a physical hard drive. DKB100, which is one gig, and I've marked it as NASA 26, and 3100 is the rev number, so I know that's the SCSI to SD drive I set up. And 200, which is a two gig drive, which I've marked as NASA 28. So it shows up in the console. What I'll do now is boot standalone backup and copy the local hard drive, the RZ24, onto the SCSI to SD card. So standalone backup can see the drives, physical and the emulated. Activity on the SCSI to SD card now. The light's flashing away, so it's formatting the drive and starting the backup. Just do Control T, and it is processing files. Anyway, we will leave that to complete and come back when it's finished. So it's finished now. Took a while, took about 17, 18 minutes. The sequential performance of the SCSI to SD is not great, so that's why it's a bit slow. Anyway, just check the devices again. And let's try and boot. so that did a full boot in 275 seconds um, I timed it on the RZ24 disk and it was 335 so 18% faster running on the SCSI to SD now as I said the sequential performance on the SCSI to SD isn't going to be as good as the hard drive but the random performance is a lot better so doing something like a boot where the drive's having to seek all over the place um, it's going to be better on the SCSI to SD anyway I can log in and there's our disk
no errors. So things are looking good on the 3100. Now we'll flip over to the Alpha server and see what happens there. Okay, I've changed the console back to serial so that you can see it on the terminal. I've also connected to the SCSI to SD module to uh, turn off the terminator because the, the bus is already terminated so I don't need that. So if I do a show dev now, it's all on the one bus, but DKA0 is the physical drive. And you can see 100 and 200 are the two drives that I've set up. So I'll do the same thing on the Alpha. I'll copy the system disk onto the SCSI to SD card. No standalone backup on Alpha, so I'll just boot at minimum and copy from there. You don't see the disks there, but so you've got to do an auto configure. should see them now, which you do. Okay. So mount DKA 200 foreign. There's nothing on it at the moment. It's totally blank. And then we'll do a backup. Zero to DK two hundred. Okay, so files are going over. Anyway, we'll let that go and come back later. Okay, that's done. A bit quicker than the other one. Let's try and boot off it. DKA 200. Let's found the disk. Turn minimum boot off and we'll do a full boot. See how long it takes. All right, they come up in 91 seconds. That's up until the deck windows login prompt, which you can't see, it's on another screen. So the disk in the machine, which is an RZ28, did in 93, so it's only two seconds faster. Our disk. That's the other one from the 3100. Yeah, that's the physical hard drive. One thing that I've noticed with uh, this controller is sometimes um, just after the VMS version number banner comes up, 
the SCSI WSD will sit there for 30 seconds just with the activity light on. No, it doesn't do it all the time, but it does it sometimes. So I don't know what's happening there, but it comes up okay and there's no errors, so that's fine. Anyway, it looks good on the Alpha as well as the Vax. So now this is looking at the graphical screen. Things don't seem too bad, not too shabby. looks good on the Alpha as well. So that all looks good. The only other thing to do is to work out what to do about backups. Um, this, the SCSI to SD, or the version 5 one anyway, um, the configuration is stored in the flash of the card itself, not on the SD card. So if you pull out the SD card, you can't transfer it to another machine because the configuration is not there. So what you have to do is yes, to save file and that will save an XML configuration file that you can load in because you want to be able to get the same um, sector counts and, and start sectors and all that sort of stuff. And here's the file that it saves. <laughs> All the settings, looks like it's all fully documented in there as well. And here's the settings for my discs, Decars at 26, 3100. So yeah, all the configuration of information is in there. Now the only other thing is to back up the actual data. And because the card doesn't it doesn't use a file system on the SD card. You can't just put it into a machine and get the data off because it's just stored as a straight you know, bunch of sectors. So I found this other utility called USB Imager that can read and compress the card. We'll have a look at that. Okay, I've now got USB Imager running. All you do in this one is select the SD card, click compress, click read and it will create a file on your desktop and read the SD card. It's a compressed file and hopefully all the blank areas of the card you haven't written to uh, zeros or highly compressible and you get a fairly small file. I did a test before on a card that had about um, seven or eight gig worth of VMS files and it compressed down to about 500 meg and I was able to restore it onto a, a different SD card and load it up into the SCSI to SD and it all worked fine. So that'll take quite a while to, to back up. So yes, the SCSI to SD seems to work fine. Gets a big tick from me, even though it is um, a fair bit more expensive than the blue SCSI, but at least it works. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting, and we shall catch up with you next time.